Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Pretty pumped here, Jared. I'm yeah. pretty pumped. It is Ohio State. It is Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. How are you doing? It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Good news. I have good news for everyone. Uh, I broke my mic stand right before we started recording, so I was able to fix it. Um, and none of that will make the final cut of the podcast. Was the camera recording? Yes, it was. Uh, is it a part of that first few awkward seconds of the show that I clip out anyway? Yes, it was. Will any of you see it? No, you won't. Unless, of course, you're part of our lovely Discord community who watched me do it live. <laughs> How you doing, right. Zach, Esquire, uh, Gangland? How y'all you doing? Discord. Right. It is. It is time. It is our love, love, love doing this. Um, this episode here. Uh, let's let's get into it. Let's get into our know your enemy. The Wisconsin Badgers. Wisconsin Badgers, indeed. Listen, I'm going to cut right to the chase on this. I'm going to cut right to the chase on this. Um, I'm excited for this game. Um, and I'm excited for this game. I'm excited for this game because I feel like this is the first time we're going to see this defense against, I mean, literally a Big Ten offense, but also like a quintessential Big Ten offense. Um, yeah, not not. Yeah, it's going to be a while until they really get to see an offense here, probably end of October. <laughs> yeah, so it's. You know, we we saw Ohio State essentially get run over against Michigan. And what Wisconsin wants to do in this game is to run over Ohio State. Take yeah, and they, and big, they, long and drives, they, kill the clock, do it through the run game. Kyle, I think if Wisconsin had their way, they would throw the ball max 20%. Max 20%. It'd be 80% run. That's what they would like to achieve in this game. Now, maybe the, the, the game circumstance doesn't play out that way. Because if Ohio State scores early, uh, shortening the game and running the ball a thousand times might not be the way to go. But if Wisconsin has their way, I think they want to run the ball at lowest 80% of the time. Well, you got you got me you got me curious here, Jared. So they've had a total of 194 plays, and they've uh, dropped back. Uh, they dropped back 67 times. So that is 34 and a half percent of the time they it is a pass play. Um, Kyle, I have actual like I have those actual numbers here. Um, and I do. it. I'm, I'm looking right here. It says pass, pass play percentage, 37 and a half. 37 and a half. Okay. So maybe some of them. You know, or scrambles or sacks. Because, because it doesn't, yep. doesn't take in consideration sacks and scrambles. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Are correct. May, it could be, but I, but I'm just, I, from a uh, team rankings.com. I've just, I found, I have those actual, I have like those numbers written out. I mean, I don't respect their ability to throw. Let's talk about that. Gangland, yeah. thank you for the transition. Um, if we take a look, um, Kyle, I was at one time a huge Mertz fan. Graham Mertz um, was a guy I was a huge fan of coming out of high school. He's a guy who I wanted Ohio State to pick up. Um, and for the record, if he had he been coached at Ohio State, maybe things have, would have gone different for him. So I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to take an L on that one. Um, but I spent a lot of time talking up Graham Mertz and how I thought he was going to be a potentially revolutionary quarterback at Wisconsin. And it, and it hasn't shown itself to be that quite yet. Um, now, good news. If you're Graham Mertz, uh, this year's not been not been too bad. Um he has completion percent. It's actually been pretty good, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, completion percentage, 71%. Uh, 
nearly 700 yards thrown already uh, and is averaging 11.2 a completion. Those are good numbers. Those are good numbers. Six touchdowns, two interceptions. But Jared. But Jared. Kind of of like um, Michigan in a way. They haven't really played that great of a um, a schedule. Better than Michigan. Much uh, better than Michigan. (laughs) I mean... It hasn't hasn't been Wisconsin's actually played someone from a big boy conference. Now we can talk about if (laughs) the if the Pac-12 still counts as a big boy conference or not. It it, it still is. It still is. And we can have a conversation about how good Washington State actually is. But it's they're 10 times better than any team uh, Michigan's played so far. And it needs to be said, Wisconsin lost to wish to Michigan, Washington State. Try that again. (laughs) <laughs> Washington, I already did it. It's fine. I'm not cutting anything else out. I trim stuff off the front of the show. I, I don't I don't go into the middle of the show. It's too much work. Um, now, here's the thing. If we. I mean, his first game was good as fields against Nebraska in 2020. Um, yeah. Uh, good news are our defensive backs are not meh. That is categorically false. Um, I, I know Burke has had like the yips this year so far. Um, and I I feel like he'll work his way through that, but Cam Brown's been great. I don't know what you're talking about. Cam Brown's been great. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. The, and the safeties have been great as well. Now, if we take a look, however, um, at Wisconsin's passing numbers when they played, uh, Washington state. Uh, only 227 through the air, uh, 18 of 31. Uh, that is where one of the interceptions comes into play and that yards per pass drops to 7.3. So when we look at Mertz's numbers, which look to, which are so far, not looks to be absolutely are to this point, um, look like a big improvement from him. We, we need to talk about the fact that their other two opponents are Illinois State and New Mexico State. Um, I, uh, Illinois State's an FCS school and New Mexico State should be. Um, I, I, I don't know what to tell, to tell you about. New Mexico State's historically one of the worst like group of five teams around. Um, so like it's uh, well, not, not worse in Hawaii this year. Or Yukon, Michigan. Uh, but yeah, they're they're still pretty bad. So there might be a bit of a number inflation taking place. And I tell you, I'll tell you, if you want a comparison, because I, I can hear like a Wisconsin person in the back of my head being like, oh, because Toledo and Arkansas State are so good. Uh, I believe Toledo and Arkansas State would each beat uh, each of Illinois State and New Mexico State. Yes, I do. Yes, I I agree with that too. And well, uh, New Mexico State and Arkansas State might be a bit of a battle. <laughs> that one might get close. I, I, I'd, I'd still take Arkansas State, but I way, think I would too. Either way, though, but that one's a bit of a coin yeah. flip. Either way, yeah. Wisconsin, as Jared mentioned, um, coming into this game two and one, that loss to Washington State. Offensively and offensively, yeah, I think I think the numbers kind of um, uh, I think are appear high just because of what Jared said, who they played. But let's let's get into some other other players other than Graham Mertz that we yeah inflated uh, other than Graham Mertz that Jared talked about. So, what are some other players that Buckeye fans should know? Well, no look no further than. <laughs> then uh, who Wisconsin will hand the ball off because it is Wisconsin and they're going to attempt to run the ball all over. Uh, and that is running back uh, Braylon Allen, who's uh, projected yeah. to be one of the best running backs, not just in the Big Ten, but in the country. Yeah, and he's running behind your typical your, Wisconsin, your standard Wisconsin offensive, offensive line. I, I don't want to say standard. I don't. If I'm being super honest with you, I don't think they're and up to the very high standard of Wisconsin offensive lines. That's so true. I'm just and I, while I like Allen, I think he's a good running back. 
Um, I also don't think he's like the next great Wisconsin running back either. Um, but so you're, you're still averaging 6.6 6 yards per carry. Again, granted who they played, but still 6.6 6 yards per, per game here, five touchdowns for the season. Definitely probably the guy you got to watch out for on the, on this offense for Wisconsin. Wisconsin did. So again, if we're going to look at, we're going to look to the uh, Washington state game because it's the only like pulse having opponent they've played so far. They did have 174 rushing yards, which is good, but they did have to rush the ball 44 times to get to that number. For anyone yeah. needing help with some quick math, now it's only four yards a carry. So I understand that there's a lot of big numbers coming in, and I and I do think Allen's a good running back, and I do think that this this is still a good, don't get me wrong, this is still a good Wisconsin offensive line. But if mm -hmm. we're talking about the quintessential, you know. Wisconsin offensive line by the very high standard that we put the idea of a Wisconsin offensive line. It's not to that standard. Still very good. Um, still the best offensive line Ohio state's played this year. I would, I would say, especially since uh, Notre Dame's was not fully healthy. Uh, had, had the offensive line at Notre Dame been fully healthy. Uh, yes. I would like that offensive line more, but they weren't. So this is the, this is the best offensive line that Ohio state has played so far this year. Yep. Agreed. Completely agree. All right. So uh, whiskey other... back hasn't gotten us yet. I don't think they're going to this year. Um, yeah. Ohio state. I uh, have, have this number in the notes, eight, eight straight wins, eight straight wins in this contest right now. Ohio state's on an eight game win streak, eight, right, uh, three yards in a cloud of dust in 2022. Yeah. It doesn't quite work that way anymore. Does it? Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. Just thinking about like Ohio State on an eight games winning streak against Wisconsin when it's it's always this type of game that Ohio State always looks and like, man, this this is going to be a tough battle. I think Wisconsin might win this one or whatever. And eight straight wins here. That's yeah, that's that's <laughs> I did not actually expect expect to hear eight wins in a row. Yeah, but, I think because there was a point in time. um, specifically like during the Barry Alvarez era um uh you had uh you had a lot of classic Wisconsin games in the in the aughts um and 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 then bleed over a little bit into the into the teens but that has not been the reality as of late it just it just mm -hmm. it hasn't been um i feel like Wisconsin has not has not gotten uh, back to that Barry Alvarez sort of level that they were at for such a long time. Yeah. Even if you go back to 2000, man, I would not have believed this since 2000, Wisconsin only won four times. I would not have thought that. I thought they would have won more than that. Yeah. But I'm just, and, and I know that's very small on people's screen down there in the chat, but um, the red ones are Ohio State wins and the ones that look black are Wisconsin wins. You can see that stretch at the turn of the century where, I mean, look, Wisconsin at one point was three and two, uh, you know, in those five matchups. Ohio State had some classic battles with Wisconsin in that era, and that's kind of a um, formative era for Kyle and I. So it's it's you know, you sort of in our minds still sort of hold Wisconsin up here uh, as a team that can really compete with take out Ohio State. But um, in the in the Meyer Day era, it has not been true. Yeah, I mean, I, I think about like the last two uh, Big Ten championship games Ohio State played Wisconsin in both really, um, really close games. Uh, Ohio State won by 13. Um, last time they, they played each other back in. Uh, 2019 but then in 2017 it was it was a six point victory for ohio state so but part of me thinks that oh will, will wisconsin be like that here and um, 
find out soon. We'll we'll give our um <laughs> give our prediction predictions here at the end of the show. Esquire uh, says, I remember the battles Pryor and Braxton waged against Bucky too. Yeah, the the, the one of the most ironic things about the Ohio State Wisconsin matchup, you know, somewhat lately over the past 10 years, um, or even if you look at the past 22 years, um, in that time, Ohio State's, you know, since the since the turn of the millennia, Ohio State's absolutely no questions asked, worst team, which is of course was the was the 2011 team. Um and the, I would say, arguably, maybe inarguably, best Wisconsin team of the, of, you know, the past 20 plus years, they had, and Ohio State still wins that game. Mm-hmm. That was, of course, the year Russell Wilson was uh, the quarterback, back when graduate transfer quarterbacks were still new and fresh. Um, and that was still controversial. <laughs> now it's standard operating procedure yeah, um it is but yeah that wisconsin's best team in the past 20 some years lost to ohio state's worst team of the last 22 years because wisconsin was absolutely the better team that year there's no question about it yep and the one time I, I, you can truly say there was no question about it they lost mm-hmm. all right some other some other players on the offense here to um to get to know. So Skylar Bell, uh, one of their, one of their up and coming, uh, freshmen, he's a redshirt freshman wide receiver, uh, has two touchdowns already, 146 yards for the season. Uh, uh, Kamir, I think it's how you say it. Um, Kamir Dyke, um, another, their deep threat has leads the team with 172 yards and a touchdown too. And then tight end, uh, Clay, Cundiff is the is the tight end that uh, Wisconsin's been going to quite a bit. Already has eight catches, 139 yards, and two touchdowns already. Yeah, and again, like we have, welcome Kabuto. Uh, um, uh, and like you have to again point out that um, the wide receivers, the numbers might be a tad inflated. Uh, again, we have two like pulseless teams on on wisconsin's record here um say that dude's name from before the tight end uh bell dyke cundiff uh wide receiver lewis wide receiver ingram um yeah that's not how you spell it um Thank you. You spell that with an I. That's how one, you actually spell it, and two, how you don't get ref bot mad at you. Uh the again, like the these wide receivers, these skill position players were not highly thought of coming into the season. Um uh, if we look at the pick six preview guide, their wide receiver core was uh eleventh out of fourteen in the Big Ten. Um I I I found it. It's it's Chim Ray. Chim Ray DK. Is it spelled? Is it pronounced DK? Pronounced Chim Ray DK. Interesting. All right. Um. Yeah, there it is down there in the show notes or the the live chat there. It's DK. Interesting. Uh, the again, like none of these wide receivers were uh, as a man of Dutch heritage. I'm offended. And this add this to Terry's list. <laughs> um, it yeah, sounded I mean, like he said, yeah. I mean, All right, none uh, of these wide receivers really, really scare me. I mean, you got I mean, one, you got Mertz throwing, <laughs> throwing to them. So I'm not, I'm not too, too worried about the deep threat here, but I mean, you got a, you got a red shirt freshman who's making, making a name for himself here. I, and I, I think that's, it's a guy you got to watch out for in this game, trying to make plays, but 
but it's more it's more on the defensive side that I think I think uh, Ohio State should worry more of rather than how many points or how or that Wisconsin's going to try to score because I, I I don't really see Wisconsin scoring that many points here. Uh, no, he transferred somewhere. Was it Rutgers? Um, but yeah, he did transfer. Uh, yeah. So again, like I, I kind of want to maybe even accuse me of hyper focus here. Um, back in on the Washington state game. Uh, if we look at the Washington state game again, like we saw a drastic fall in Wisconsin's, uh, especially their passing numbers. Uh, the, they still, like I said, like I said uh, a couple times, rushed for about what they rush for, um, if not maybe slightly less. Uh, but their passing numbers took a huge dip. And again, they had to rush the ball a bunch of times to get to those numbers. Um, mm. I What we have to find out, what we need to find out in this game, can Ohio State... Does Ohio State, I think is a better way of saying that, have the ability to go up against a pretty good offensive line? Because I know I said, like, it's not up to the standard of a Wisconsin. Off. It's you too, Kabuto. Um, the, it's not quite up to the standards of a Wisconsin offensive line, but by most people's standards, by the standards of college football in general, it's still a very good offensive line. And a good not in like I know I know we highlighted uh highlight uh Allen as like you know Wisconsin's primary running back because he is but they have other running backs they have a pretty deep roster of running backs that they will go to um so it's not it's not just Allen so I'm just I'm trying to treat this as like a a litmus test for Ohio State. What does this defense look like playing Wisconsin versus what did this defense look like playing Michigan? What happens if a team with a bunch of big dudes say, we're just going to run the ball straight down your throat because that Wisconsin will walk into the shoe and they will try to replicate the Michigan game plan. 100% what they're going to attempt to do. And yep. we know this defensive line and these linebackers are fast. We know that they play well in space and we've seen them do great things against inferior teams for the most part. Now let's, now let's see what they do against a big 10 offensive line and a big 10 rushing attack and a big 10 tight end. Um, that's what I that's what I want to see here. That's what I need to see here. I hope Wisconsin doesn't outthink things because I want to see them try to straight up run it down Ohio State's throat. Uh, yep. That's what I want, because I want to see what what Ohio State does in response to that. Uh, so that's like I said, that's that's what I want to see here. That's what I need to see here for just as an Ohio State fan. I want Wisconsin to test Ohio State where they appeared to be the weakest last year. Yep. Yep. All right. Defensively here, Jared, uh, I think, I think uh, Wisconsin has a couple of players that you should definitely keep an eye out for. Um, one really, really highly rated guy going to be in the NFL playing in the NFL here. Um, their nose tackle, their defensive tackle, uh, Kanye Benton. You look at the stats that hasn't really done anything yet, but he's big guy. He's going to, I think he's going to be a disruptance here and Ohio State needs to definitely keep an eye out for him. Uh, some other some other players, mainly on that linebacker side there, Wisconsin always seems to have some good linebackers and this year's no no exception here. Uh, Nick Herbig is, Nick, excuse me, Nick Herbig is, again, a, a player I think that will make it to the NFL, um, rated really high. Um, Projected to be like a Big Ten honors, first team, second team here. Uh, already has four sacks for the year. And another guy is, and I'm going to, here's another one, Jared. Good we're luck, gonna, Kyle. We're going to, we're going to, we're not gonna we, go you. Here. We're going to go uh, Mumo Jong Meta. 
I, I, I don't hate that pronunciation, but it's you Lima know. John Meta. Yeah. I, 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 who's the, uh, who's a, the other linebacker inside linebacker <laughs> already has 19 tackles, um, in an interception already this year. Darius Knotts is Austin's player to watch. Okay. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, the, the I was other, about to say, that... I didn't yeah. even know who the hell that was. Yeah. The, the, the other, the other player here is uh, their safety. Uh, John uh, uh, Torchio uh, already has 12 tackles as a safety, which you can look at that uh, two different ways here, but uh, definitely a guy got to watch out for on the defensive backs. Yep. Any, uh, other player, any other players, Jared, here that that come to your mind? Uh, I mean, as 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 you've said, um, this is a you know, there's a lot of talented dudes on the on the defense. Um, I I have a lot of suspicion that the offense is not nearly as good as their stats look. Um, even though the running back's pretty good, and even you know all the stuff I've already said. Um. I, I don't think that they're as good as the stats, especially, especially from a, from a passing perspective. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Um, okay. Defense I'm, on I'm, the I'm, other I'm, hand, Kyle, true or false. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be the best defense Ohio state has played to this point? Um, to this I, point? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, so, I mean, the, the question here, actually is are they better than notre dame's defense i think is the actual question here i'm, I'm gonna say no I'm, I'm gonna say no i think i think notre dame's defense is better than than wisconsin but yeah i, I i'll stick with my gut i it's i think i think overall wisconsin or not wisconsin notre dame has a better has a better defense Wisconsin is also without three DBs. Yes, they are. Um, yep. It's hard They're to talk about out of people, actually. Ohio State yeah. also potentially out a few people, although I guess uh, Ryan Day did say that they are expected to play, that he really wants them and really needs them. It's so hard to talk about injuries in modern college football because uh, people have basically decided to stop sharing information um uh, especially since we record this on a wednesday and the game's on a saturday like <laughs> yeah, so, it, so it, it becomes it, very difficult to talk about injuries on this show unfortunately yeah so so here's here's who who here's who wisconsin's out they're out with their uh their best quarterback alexander smith they are out they're starting right tackle riley uh mallman they're out one of their tight ends cam large uh, outside linebacker Aaron Witt, uh, safety Hunter, and a one of their backup quarterbacks is who is out. Yeah, and like again, it's really hard to it's really hard to say again because like we we record this on Wednesday, uh, you know we're three full day, you know what I mean? Like injuries, it's it's it's. And their kicker is really bad. I did notice, uh, I have noticed that they have two separate kickers in their stats. So that's typically not a good sign. No, no that's not. <laughs> it's typically not a good sign. Um, yeah, one guy um, has seven extra point attempts. The other guy has nine extra point attempts. Um, what, uh, they have two different guys with a field goal made, um, but one of uh, one of them has missed two already. Mm. Yikes. They got 14 against Wazoo at home. I I know. Like, this is, this. I mean, again, so I keep going back to the, I keep going back to the uh, Washington State game for that exact reason. Um, yep. It'd be, I'd almost give them a pass if they went out west 
I'd almost give him a pass if this was Washington instead of Washington State. Um, I so here, and I know I know Washington State's supposed to be somewhat better this year than we normally expect them to be, um, but still, but still, um, and by the way. 14 points. They only scored 14 points against Washington state. Zero of those points were in the second half. Yes. All of them were in that second quarter. And you look at their schedule here, the rest of the year, Jared, man, you can, you can look at the schedule and especially what we've seen so far here at the winner of the, of the West division might come down to the last the last week there when they play Minnesota like it is i it, now now that we i think we know who Sparty is here other than the Ohio State game they they they, they got a pretty pretty good schedule ahead of them hey Kyle or look favorable, at favorable uh, i guess yeah well the, the they have a pretty good they have a pretty favorable schedule behind them too um the <laughs> <laughs> yeah Kyle, yes. look, look at Austin's score prediction in the chat. I, well, I already it. know. I already know. I Just saw. saying. Just I saying. saw. Okay. I saw. I, yeah, you saw. All right. All right. Any, anything else? We're going to we're going to get into our uh, to our predictions here. Anything else before we jump into that? No, let's do it. All right. So this week's guest picker who is not in our chat. He's traveling. Our mods. He is traveling. One of our mods, Nomad. I can't Nomad tell you where, is... though. It's a secret. <laughs> yeah, he won't tell us. Uh, so, yep, Nomad will be our picker. So let us get right into it. I'm not he sure is, of he course, always made... traveling as he is a Nomad. Ah, I don't know if he made any prediction here from our our picks here, Jared, but uh, but we'll we'll jump right into it. So. Ohio State player to watch. Um, I got. I got you want to go? Go ahead. Nope. Go, you go. go. You go. You, you, you like you go. To, so you go. I didn't know you were gonna keep talking. <laughs> I got chop. I got chop. I'm picking. I'm picking someone completely different here. We still. Uh, Henderson still unknown. I know that. Uh, Coach Day came out and said, oh, he, I, I expect Henderson to play, but but rule number one. Right. Right, so I'm, I'm going I'm going with chop here. I think I think they're going to give the ball to chop a lot. And yeah, I, th I think he's going to have a he's going to have a good day here. Did did you say chop a lot? I did say chop a lot. Chop. Is that a, is that a thing? Or did you just say that? Because I like it. I just said it. I love the nickname chop a lot. Sir chop a lot. It's good. I like it. Yeah. Kyle, you just coined right. something who you important. Who you got, Jared? Who, who I got Jared Tommy Eichenberg, which, by the way, Ooh. it appears that Austin also said Eichenberg. And I'm just going to assume that this is the this is the truth. And that he's not. Um, trying to troll me I, um, I believe we have i believe this is the third week in a row <laughs> one of us jared has picked eichenberg i don't square. <laughs> i didn't know you were going to keep talking the victim blaming interrupter <laughs> <laughs> oh guilty is charged guilty is charged All right. I, I don't think nomad gave us a pick so we'll move on to the next one here jared enemy woo enemy player to watch i'll let you go first jared thank you good sir um i'm going braylon allen it feels like the obvious pick um but if ohio state can shut down the wisconsin uh running game and you know braylon allen appears to be the premier running back of again what is a crew of pretty good running backs it's not just going to be allen but uh, he is obviously halfback one uh, so I'm marking him as the player to watch. All right. And I'll, I'll go with that. That is the obvious answer. Yes. But I'll, I'll go with their, I'll go on the defensive side and I'm going to say 
uh, Nick Herbig. Uh, I think he's going to have to have a monster game to slow down whoever is going to get the ball for for Ohio State and going to have to really track them down. So if if Nick Herbig has like double digit tackles this game, that that I think I think that's probably a good sign for Wisconsin. All right, uh, key matchup here. By the way, uh, Austin said Allen is going to go for 92 and two touchdowns, mark it down. Uh, then he said on 31 carries. Kyle, is that a win for Ohio State? If if those that are the stats. Be, that would be a win for Ohio State, yes. I agree. If That's... it takes him if it takes him 31 carries to get to 92 yards, and you know, you say two touchdowns. Maybe those are the only two touchdowns. Um, I think that's probably a win for Ohio State. It also depends upon what stats the other running backs put up. You know what I mean? Like, because if if there's a second running back who also has those exact stats, um, then that would obviously be an issue. Yep. Key matchup. I'm, I'm, I'm going to mix my player to watch in my enemy player to watch, and that's Chop versus Herbig. <laughs> I almost did that, by the way. I almost just turned around and said Eichenberg versus Allen, but I wanted to highlight some different people. I wanted to highlight some different people. Um, sure. Offensive tackle uh, for Wisconsin named Tyler Beach um, appears to probably be the um, most highly touted anyway. He's he's a fifth-year senior. Uh, he's a guy the NFL is absolutely watching. Uh, he's their left tackle. Um, and I'm going to say him versus the Ohio State uh, defensive ends. Whoever, because he's a uh, beach. Just do that. Yes, I can. You said you weren't going to do that. And here you are doing it. What do you mean? I wasn't going to. What do you mean? Like you like doing doing position groups versus no, no, position no. Group, whatever. But I'm not. I This specific player versus whatever de- Ohio State defensive end is lined up over top of him. That is perfectly legitimate to say. What do you say, guys? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Jared said he wasn't going to do this, but but I'm not. I'm not saying the entire offensive line versus the entire defensive line. That is what we agreed was bullshit, and we had to stop doing. I hate to say it, but Jared's right. Austin says I'll allow it. Uh, Buckeye Square said I hate to say, but Jared's right. Um, Gangland said, uh, whoever is against my call, that's that's a, also a very good answer. Um, <laughs> yeah. You Michael, said you Michael weren't going to do here. that. Now you're doing it. That's what she said. Thank you, Kabuto. <laughs> Thank you. All right. This spread in this game when we locked it in was Ohio State 17 and a half point favorite. And that seems really high for an Ohio State-Wisconsin game. Well, it's... Um, it's up to, I think, 19 and a half now. Um, last I checked, I think it's up to 19 and a half. And again, this is a Wednesday night that we're recording this. So um, a lot of people seem to be picking Ohio State at 17 and a half, um, which for the record uh, kind of makes us still locked in at 17 and a half. Um, Kabuto has a good point that Ohio State Notre Dame was also minus 17. Um, I'll go ahead and say this. Defensively speaking, I do believe Wisconsin's a better football or excuse me, that Notre Dame's a better football team. Um, I think that offensively, Wisconsin might be better, although the problem is, is that they are very one note. They're a very one note offense. Um, so that even though they're better and I think they are a better offense, I don't necessarily know that there'll be a better offense against Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. So it's 17 and a half, but you said you've seen it go as high as 19 and a half, Jared? I believe, yeah, I, I know I saw it at 19 at certain casinos. <laughs> well, it's not enough. It's not, it's not it's enough. It's not enough. I believe, <laughs> yeah, um, I w- Austin says I would still take 19. Uh, Gangland says... And it's uh and it's line up, line it up and run it. Uh yeah. The anytime they raise the spread means buckeyes don't cover. Uh I don't know if that's true. Um if the if the casinos seriously thought that Ohio State wasn't gonna cover, then they wouldn't move the spread. It's it happened 
last year against Michigan, where everyone kept tanking Ohio State, taking Ohio State, taking Ohio State at like ridiculous numbers. And the casinos never moved moved that spread. Yeah. Um so yeah, well, I, I, the fact I, that they're moving the spread probably indicates that they do think Ohio State can 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 achieve that. Yeah. Kyle, so, for the first I, I time think, ever. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. You you go ahead. I was first I was moving ever. on to uh we're, we're the 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 final score. Oh, yes. So I mean that I, I kind of I kind of gave away my um the spread here. I I think 17 and a half is not enough here. No, I thought so you already I, said that. So I have here, and um I think somebody else agrees in our chat if you've if you follow along here or those in the chat have seen it, but I agree with somebody with a final score here. And for the first time, as Jared was saying, Jared and I actually agree for the very first time with a fight with the exact same score. Yeah. And seriously, this is year eight of the podcast. Um, We've never predicted the exact same final score before, but uh, here we are. We finally did it. Yep. And with uh, good old Sloopcast tradition. Did we actually say it's 42 to 17? Did we actually say that out loud yet? To se- yeah, okay. I was getting there. 42 okay. to 17 <laughs> is our final score. And yes, it's in, in Austin. That's why I highlighted yours and pointed it out to <laughs> Kyle. Because I, I already saw what he put in the show notes and he already saw what I put in the show notes. So um, this is a disaster that all f- that that. Kyle and I, plus Austin, uh, all agree on the final score. That's probably a bad sign. Or maybe I'm just being pessimistic. Um, Kyle, we do have the, guest the guy, picker the, the Nomad. Guy, says, says 52 to 7. And Wisconsin only scores an Iowa touchdown. <laughs> no one scores an Iowa touchdown other than Iowa. Yeah. Ever. Uh, ever. 70 to 10. Get bodied, Bucky. That's a That's a lot of points against this defense. That is, yeah. Washington quite frankly, 17, fourteen. <laughs> yeah. Quite frankly, forty-two is a lot against against this defense. Um, I mean, we, we we saw how. Just Kyle, dumb. I broke I broke my sixty-nine tradition for this game. That's that's how much how I dom- don't think points are going to get scored here. How dominant Ohio State's offense is this year? Like it's just crazy. It is just crazy. But yeah, let's let's listen to Nomad here. He didn't give us any any uh, player or matchup uh, picks here, but let's hear what Nomad, our guest picker, says here. Wisconsin's defense will be, well, he says, will be the toughest the Buckeyes play this entire season. Mm. Environment, in, environment in the shoe will be insane with the blackout, and the offense will be humming. But I still have lingering doubts about Ohio State's defense early in the season. Give me whiskey to cover. Well, he's probably on some whiskey because I think he's drunk when uh, when making this note to you to us, Jared. Maybe, maybe. Uh, no, I I do like Notre Dame's defense more. Um, he did say, "Give him whiskey." I mean, yeah, that's it's, yeah, it's pretty. It's run to cover. It's pretty run of the mill. That's very run of the mill for, for Nomad. Yes, it is. <laughs> now, just for the record, I believe he's only taking whiskey to cover, but still taking Ohio State to win. Yes. That's going to be my assumption. Yes. <laughs> he, 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 he did. If he specified cover. Win. Yeah. But he, if he, if he, if he said Wisconsin covers, that cover. implies that Ohio State's going to win outright. Mm-hmm. Yes, he. You're right, Buckeye Esquire. The lawyer is going to point out that he didn't specifically say it because that's that's how his mind has been conditioned to work. Um, we'd have to ban him for picking an L. Maybe, maybe. All right, Kyle. Uh, that's it for the predictions. Except, except we do, of we, course, have uh, Austin's over unders. We do. Let's let's jump right into that. So first, Austin's over unders. We have catches by Ohio State players other than JSN, EZE, or MHJR. 
Okay. You got that? Did you get that? Yeah. 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 You sure? You, yeah, you want me it. to say it again? No, I, I can see it in the notes. It's fine. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure. And he yeah, had yeah, eight yeah. and a half catches other than those three players, eight and a half. So we, we still have Julian Fleming, Cade Stover, Xavier yep. Johnson, the running um, backs. The running backs um i'm gonna go over i'll go over here it's a good number it, it's i'll go over i'll go over i'll go under all right ruggles field goal attempts at one and a half i think he has one i think he'll have one attempt here i, I think i'm gonna go over here even though my final score prediction doesn't indicate any field goals. Um, I'm still going well, to could. go over here. It could. It could. Uh, Eichenberg slash ransom total tackles. At That's 14, what I'm thinking, Austin. At 14 and a half. Oh, uh, over. Yes, I agree. Over. Uh, Ohio State forced turnovers at two and a half. I'll go under here. I, I I don't think Ohio State has shown me that they can pause a lot of turnovers so far. So I'll go I'll go under. Maybe they'll get one. Maybe maybe two. But yeah, more than two. Yeah, I I feel this is probably my most comfortable uh, over unders pick. So I'll go under. Yeah, uh, we've not seen a ton of turnovers. And again, we have to point out that they have not played great competition. Acknowledged, acknowledged, acknowledged. Um, but uh, only two. I'm trying to see if I have like a specific stat for turnovers on the season. I don't think I do, unfortunately. Um, I know there's been. Oh, here we go. Um, takeaways per. That's a takeaway, not a giveaway. Uh, turnover margin per game plus three. All right. Um, I know there's been two interceptions. I don't know about fumbles. I don't have that stat available to me right now. Um, I, if they're forced to throw the ball a lot, then that that's out of their comfort zone, which could lead to more strip sacks or interceptions, but they have so far this season been pretty conservative with the ball. So I'm going to go under here. I think I think the number is probably two. So I'm going to go under here. OK. All right. Uh, Stroud the defense hasn't predict uh, on, on around turnovers. It's about stops. I agree. Um, yep. yep. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> Buckeye Zach says uh fuck him jared make him throw i mean that's the idea right that that's <laughs> yeah. why it's important for ohio state not to just score points but to score points early you score a bunch of points early you're going to force wisconsin out of their comfort zone so like if you're going to score 42 points you're going to have a lot better chance scoring 42 points if you know you get 28 of those in the first half you know what I mean? Like it's you have to get them out of their game as soon as possible. And you do that by scoring points. Um, they say sometimes the best offense is a good defense. Well, sometimes the best defense is a good offense. You, you force a team to be one dimensional in the direction that they're not. I feel like the term one dimensional is not an accurate way of describing this. I actually started thinking about the math of it and I don't like the term one dimensional anymore. So I see here, Jared, Ohio state so far has one interception for the year and okay, hold on. one Kab fumble recovery. Kabuto says, if you score a lot, you win easier. Y yeah. Okay. Mock me, mock me, mock me. I talked about when they scored. <laughs> I talked about when they scored. Ohio State is going to have a much better time if they French fry instead of pizza, uh, if they score points early versus scoring points late. All right. All right. Stroud completion. My, my clip, this was genuine. No, no, no. I'm, I'm calling 
Buckeye Square, I'm calling out Kabuto for uh, uh, basically accusing me of John Maddening and, and saying, if you score a lot, you win. It's not what I was saying, Kabuto. And you know it. All right. Stroud completion percentage over under 69.59%. Uh, nice. The I'm going to go over, and I'm going to base a lot of that on some of the um, injuries in the secondary right now, primarily. Um, I agree. I where is where nice where? Number. But yeah, I'll I'll go over as well. Where where is Austin? Maybe you you probably have this. Um, where where is um. He's averaging, oh, he already said it. He's averaging 72% this year, but this defense is good. Yeah. Hey, let's, let's, let's be nice here. It's 72.9. He's almost at 70. He's 0.1 away from 73%. Yeah. Uh, makes it easy for those quick outs. Yeah. And here's the thing. It actually might help his completion percentage as they might, you know, be a little bit more conservative and throw some shorter stuff early because they're not just going to chuck the ball deep like they do against the Toledo's and Arkansas states of the world. Yep. All right. Hayden carries over under five and a half. Now, now a lot, a lot of this is going to be on Henderson's health. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'll go, I'll go over. I'll go over. I think, I think we'll, I think we'll see uh, more than five carries for Hayden. I'm going under here. Um, and I agree, Austin. I think I think we'll see Henderson, but he will be limited. Yeah, I I agree. I don't even think he's going to be limited. I'll be honest with you. I think he's fine. Um, All right, and deep. Hold on, hold on. I'm I'm still talking. Uh, I think he's fine. Um, I think everything we saw from him, because like Ryan Day says he's fine. And now, of course, the doctor lies, right? Rule That's rule number one. The doctor lies. But what I saw from his body language, from him walking around on the sideline, he didn't seem to be worried, concerned, limping. He didn't even take his shoulder pads off. I am not worried about it. I think he's perfectly fine. I think he goes back into that game last week. If they were playing Wisconsin, I think that was a straight up. Hey, we're moving the ball just fine against this team. Just sit this one out, buddy. You know what I mean? Like it's a, uh, Hey, we want to get Hayden some more carries anyway. Go ahead and sit this one out, buddy. Like he's, he's fine. Henderson's fine. Don't worry about Henderson. Uh, so, and since I'm not worried about H Henderson, um, I don't think there's going to be a lot of carries left over for Hayden because despite my final score prediction, I don't think this is a game in which we see like a full scale, you know, bringing in of the second team at any point. All right. Defensive lineman sacks two and a half. I'm going to go over. Um he gives us defensive linemen. So, you know, we're getting defensive tackles in this. Um, and again, <laughs> I'm going full Sam block over six sacks. <laughs> uh, if you're on Twitter, that's a funny, that's a funny thing to say. Um, the, yeah, he's, he gives us both offense or excuse me, both defensive ends and defensive tackles. I'm going to go over on this, especially, like I said, for high state scores early, they throw more than they're comfortable with. I think that's a very achievable number. I'll go, I'll go under, I think Wisconsin, because they can't throw the ball deep. They're going to get rid of the ball quicker. I, I just don't think the defensive line is going to be able to, to get there in time. So I'll, I'll say under. Fair enough. Um, but again, like, I, th I don't know if they're going to have a whole lot of choice. Yeah. All right, and we have some uh, last-minute questions here from Guy Zach. Uh, but Guy Zach says, Tommy DeBeast Eichenberg sacks one and a half. Uh, over, or under, rather. I just, I, it's not his primary role to be getting sacks. No, of course, they send blitzes to do that. Um Never call him that. 
Yeah. You're such uh, a hate. You you're asked, such a hater, Austin. Yeah. He he asks, did you guys also know the Sleuthcast boom gifts were on Telegram as well? Uh, it's yeah. anything uh, that pulls from tenor. So if it's a tenor yeah. tie in the. Yeah, anything with tenor. So it's on there. All of our cust. By the way, uh, just for anyone listening, uh, I know Discord. I know Twitter. Apparently Telegram. Um, anything that has a, a a tenor based, like when you search for gifts, a lot of times it's pulling from the service tenor. Twitter does. As an example, if you type Sloopcast into there, um, there's a bunch of our custom gifts in there. Uh, so you can do either Sloopcast. Team Chaos, Sloopcast, Boom, and you find a bunch of stuff in there. Yep. And last question. Integration from is the word, Kabuto. Thank you. What should we expect from the running game against Wisconsin's defense? I think the past, I think the past few games here so far, this it goes burr. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think what we're seeing this year, and I'm I'm really happy to see this, is that. Is that Ryan Day's trusting the lineman, offensive line, trusting the the running backs to get the yardage that they need to, and they're getting them this year. So I think I think he's going to continue trusting them and going to give them the ball uh, more often than what we saw last year. Because there was there was times it was like third and two, and they don't get it. And this year so far, we we've we've seen that. So I. I think that bodes well and the confidence for the running back. So I, I expect them to have a, another, another good day in the, uh, in the office. Yeah. I think Kyle said something in there that I wholeheartedly agree with, which is, um, or maybe it was Buckeye Esquire. I forget where I heard it, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to read what Esquire said. I think the numbers will look fine in the end, but we'll be frustrated by it in the game. That's I think that's probably what you get from the offense. It's it was kind of like the Notre Dame game where it didn't feel like the running game did well. But mm -hmm. then you look at the stats and that it actually did do well. I think that's a pretty accurate take. Yep. Yep. All right. That's it, Jaron. That is all the questions we have here. That is knowing our enemy for this week. Any last words before we uh, before we end tonight's episode? Uh, no, I think we're good. By the way, if we're, if we're all looking for a nickname, I, I will throw this on at the end. If we're all still looking for a nickname for Tommy Eichenberg, because there's a lot of mean ones out there and I will not, I will not listen to those, um, because y'all are wrong and he's proving it. Um, if we're looking for a Tommy Eichenberg nickname, I want to go with Tommy Pickles Eichenberg. Tommy Pickles. That's my that's my submission. See, now you go in with the gift, but right here it says Austin says he'll allow it. So uh, Buckeye Esquire appears to not be a fan. Zach appears to not be a fan. OK, well, you know, haters are hating, I guess. I like Tommy Pickles, Tommy Pickles Eichenberg. It's fun to say you have to Kyle say it out loud. Don't give me the silent treatment on the podcast. You know, I don't like that air. I don't. I don't approve, Jared. Listen, Kyle, I'm going to need you to put a picture of Tommy Eichenberg in the chat. And then tell me I'm not on to something. You are on something. On to something. You not hating. on something. So there's half of the equation. In the chat. Thank you, right. Buckeye Zach. All right. Now, now, now can I get a picture of Tommy Pickles? <laughs> All right. All right, Jared. I think that's it. Um, be sure to follow us on, on um, all the social medias. Uh, be sure to click on our doobly doos. Follow us on, on YouTube, we post shorts. Our all of our episodes will be on there. Uh, hit us up on Discord. Uh, our Discord is very lively this time of the year, <laughs> especially during the uh, <laughs> during the recordings. Yep. Yes. Uh, yep. Become a Patreon. Thank you. 
Austin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you made him say it wrong. That one's on you. <laughs> he got him. Got him. He got him. <laughs> uh, become a patron at patreon.com. Um, Discord.thesweepcast.com. But you know he's Ron Burgundy. Burgundy. He's just going to read it the way you said it. Oh, see, Kyle, it's not, it's not so fun when everyone's picking on you. They're normally picking on me, huh? No, that, that's not it. That's not it. But go, go ahead go ahead and finish. Go ahead and finish, Jared. Oh, uh, you know what, Kyle? Go ahead. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. All right. What's tonight's ending music then, Jared? <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Um, Austin says I'm not requesting the music. We are doing... Yes, uh, as I'm talking to you, Austin. I know I'm 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 still having a conversation with you, Austin. You're assuming I'm gonna I haven't said no yet. I haven't said no yet. Well then you don't uh, we're gonna do another mother folk song. We did it Monday, Tuesday. We're gonna do it we're just we're doing a band for the week. That's what we're doing right now. Um so if you want to pick one of their songs. <laughs> Gangland, god damn it. Um all right. Uh well we, we all we will be I, I gave him an opportunity to pick a mother folk song and he's passing. So uh we are still playing a mother folk song. Um so with uh all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support the local podcasters. Once again, this is Mother Folk. <laughs>